This property is absolutely stunning, valued at $1.5 million. But realistically, there's no way we can afford such a place. Didn't you mention that your dad would assist with the down payment? If that's the case, it shouldn't pose a problem. Nevertheless, it still feels excessively expensive. There has to be a limit, you know? While discussing potential new homes, my husband proposed an ultra-luxurious property exceeding $1.5 million. My father had agreed to contribute to the down payment, but I couldn't help but wonder how much burden we were placing on him. I was taken aback by my husband's audacity after marriage. Eventually, we settled on a property to visit, and the place was even more impressive than its hefty price tag. Both my husband and I were captivated by its features, especially the spacious garden perfect for hosting barbecues. Wow, this is incredible. I'll go check out the garden. Ah, then I'll wait. It's this way. As my husband stepped into the garden, I found myself pulled into another room by the real estate agent. The moment we entered, the agent slammed the door shut and immediately locked it. Confused and frightened, with my husband outside, I began to tremble in fear. The agent apologized for the rudeness and dropped a bombshell. There's something you need to know about your husband. You should run away from him right now. His unexpected statement left me speechless, and the shocking truth he revealed next turned my face pale. Simultaneously, I vowed to divorce such a husband. My name is Yuliana, and currently I'm living with my boyfriend of one year. Despite dating with marriage in mind and maintaining a seemingly perfect relationship, we're both over 28 and not yet married. We're often regarded as the ideal couple among our friends. However, his proposal to go out for drinks with friends raised some concerns. I'm going out for drinks with friends. Might not be back until morning. But that's okay, right? I'll try to come back early. But if we get carried away, I might end up drinking all night. Once we're married, I can't do this, so let me have my last hurrah, okay? All right. But don't drink too much and get wasted, I said with a smile, sending him off. Well, I didn't want him to stay out all night. I believed his words indicated we were close to marriage. Yet, the shocking truth revealed later made me vow to divorce such a husband. I might get a rare day off soon. How about we go out this coming Monday? Sorry, I have work. But you always finish on time, and we can go after that. I often work late, so it's okay. I have plans to drink with friends after work. Really sorry. There's still a week until next Monday, and he already has plans for a drinking party. It felt a bit unnatural, and I was concerned that he wasn't making much time for me recently. If I suggest going somewhere on the weekend, he always has an excuse to decline. If he's free, he's either too tired and wants to rest or not feeling well. Of course, I was happy that he showed the intention to marry me, and I understood his desire to have fun before marriage. While I try to be accommodating, it doesn't mean I want to silently accept being neglected. Lately, you haven't been making time for me. Can't we do something together? I promise to drink with high school friends I haven't seen in a long time, and everyone's coming to New York, so next time, okay. Well, when you put it like that, I can't really say no. I knew I was being swayed by his persuasive words, but I had this fear that pushing too hard might upset him and jeopardize our marriage plans. So I didn't sing much, generally keeping my emotions to myself. Even if I felt a little upset, I never became emotional. Being over 28, I think I was in a rush to get married. In hindsight, I should have been more discerning about my partner. Many of my friends were getting married, and I was fixated on the idea of marriage due to my age. By the way, what about us getting married? I want to live in a big new house after we get married, but we don't have much money yet. Well, if we decide to get married, my dad said he'd help with the down payment for a new house, so we don't have to worry about money. Really? Then I want to get married soon too. Seems like good timing, right? I'm so happy. Although it wasn't a romantic proposal, if it even counted as a proposal, we decided to get married. For me, the fact of getting married was more important than the words of the proposal. I was just happy that we were going to get married. Finally, I was going to get married. I was relieved not to be left on the shelf.
Of course, I loved him, so I was happy about marrying him, but I also felt a sense of security in acquiring the status of a married woman. So, I brought some brochures for new homes. How about this one? If we're getting a substantial down payment, we should buy a nice house. Um, these are all over one million dollars. Isn't that a bit too expensive? But your dad's putting down a significant amount, right? And your dad's a corporate executive. He's loaded. He'll splurge for our wedding gift, so this amount should be fine. Since we decided to get married, we immediately started looking for a new home. However, around this time, his personality started to change, or rather, he started showing his true colors. Once I told him about my father's offer to help with the down payment, he began bringing up only ultra-luxurious properties. Of course, I understand wanting a big house, considering our future children. We both were working, so we could manage a substantial payment, but isn't it a bit presumptuous? It's too audacious to ask my father for this much. I think we can afford it, but it's not about the money. It's just too much to ask of my father. Wait a minute. Are you saying your dad is more important than me? He doesn't spend much and has saved up a lot. We'll eventually inherit it all when he passes away. It would be better if he uses it now. He wasn't wrong. My dad isn't the type to splurge, and he does have substantial savings. If I don't use this and pass away as the only daughter, I would inherit everything, but that's not the point. It's incredibly disrespectful to my still healthy and active father, and just too presumptuous. He wasn't like this before we got married. What happened to him? It's like he married me for my father's money. You didn't want to marry me, but my dad's money, right? That's not true. Don't get me wrong. We might have kids in the future, and we need space for your parents' care. That's why I want a decent house, right? Don't worry. It's not about the money. Indeed, his points made sense. If we need space for future children or my parents' care, a bigger house is better. I should first consult my father. It's his money, after all. It's not right for me to decide everything. After hearing his opinion, we can move forward with specific plans. That's what I thought as I decided to contact my father. So, we're looking at some expensive properties. What do you think? You don't have to worry about us. But if you think about future children, living in a spacious house might be better. And if it makes my darling daughter happy, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. My father said this with a smile. Truly, wealthy people don't even flinch at such things. Maybe I was worrying too much. Maybe it's okay to go for an expensive house. Seeing my father so relaxed made me think that, but I still felt it was too much to ask of him. However, it seemed my husband got carried away with my father's words and started bringing even more luxurious properties. This property is amazing. It's worth $1.5 million. Wait, we can't afford a place like that. But didn't you say your dad would help with any amount for the down payment? If that's the case, there's no problem. Even so, this is just too expensive. There's a limit, you know. Realizing there was no stopping him, I picked a few properties that I liked and decided to view them immediately. House viewings aren't usually this rushed, but if I left my husband to his devices, he would surely keep bringing higher-priced properties. Moreover, since we got married, he's become really greedy about money, and I couldn't control it alone. Not just that, his emotional state had become unstable recently, and any slight criticism would come back tenfold. So, I really wanted to find a property we both liked quickly. All right, we'll go for a viewing tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m., don't forget, okay? All right, I'm heading out for a bit, going out now. Where are you going? It's early tomorrow. Just for a drink. A friend invited me. Going out for drinks now. It's already past 10 p.m. We need to leave the house by 8.30 a.m. tomorrow for the viewing, meaning we have to get up around 7 a.m. and he's going out for drinks now. He'll probably come back late at night. And I wonder if he'll even wake up on time tomorrow. But if I say anything more, he'll just snap at me. Knowing that, I had no choice but to see him off. Really, he lacks common sense as an adult. He wasn't like this when we were dating. Was marrying him a mistake? 
I've been thinking that more and more recently. Please wake up. It's time. We'll be late if you don't hurry. The next day, as expected, he wouldn't wake up, no matter how many times I tried. When he finally did, he was in a foul mood. I don't know what time he came back last night, but he still smells of alcohol. He can't drive in this state. I don't have a license, so we have to take the train. This throws off all our plans. The worst start to our day of viewings. Wow, this is incredibly beautiful. As expected of a luxury home, it's on another level. My husband and I were both in a foul mood up until we got here, hardly exchanging any words. But once we stood in front of the property, all that grumpiness just vanished. It was considerably larger than it looked in the photos, and above all, it exuded luxury. We had only seen the exterior, but it seemed like a really good property. I felt that deep down, the real estate agent was already waiting for us. But they've been rather curt since a while ago. It was such a great property, yet I wondered if this is how high-end real estate agents act. But there was no point in complaining to the agent. We decided to go inside for a viewing, thinking that if we liked this house, we would settle on it. This comes with a large garden where you can enjoy things like barbecues. Wow, that's amazing. I'm going to go check out the garden too. Ah, then I'll wait. This way. As soon as my husband stepped out into the garden, the real estate agent pulled me by the arm into another room. As soon as we entered, they slammed the door shut and immediately locked it. Wait a minute, what's going on? It's unbelievable to do this when I came to see the house with my husband. But the fact that they brought me to this separated room and even locked the door made me realize something was off. A wave of fear surged through me and I started to tremble. I was so scared I felt like crying. But the agent put their index finger to his lips, gesturing for me to be quiet. I'm sorry for being so rude. However, I need to tell you something. Your husband. You need to run away from him. Now, run away. What is this person talking about? Could this be some new kind of pickup line? Regardless, my fear only grew. Although I had calmed down a bit, I considered calling out loudly for my husband's help. But before I could do anything, the agent continued. Actually, I have a friend who runs a bar in the Las Vegas Strip. I introduced them to this real estate, and that's how we're connected. But recently, they came to me with a problem. It's about illegal drug trafficking. There are people using my friend's bar as a place for these transactions. We caught someone yesterday, and it was your husband. I was shocked. My husband dealing in illegal drugs? That's impossible. He has a normal job, and he's not the type to get involved in crime. But I couldn't deny that there were some signs. Ever since we decided to get married, he's become excessively greedy about money. Lately, he's always been restless, and suddenly he started carrying two cell phones, one for work and one for personal use. Even yesterday, he went out for a drink all of a sudden, even though he was ready to go to bed. Couldn't actually be true. It's a coincidence, but I can't just ignore it. It would be a huge loss for me if my property were used for a crime. That's why I always keep an eye out. My friend caught him yesterday, and we have evidence. After saying that, the agent opened the door, leading me back to the living room. Just then, my husband entered the house from the garden. Where have you been? I was just explaining the system kitchen to her. It's an important element for the lady of the house. Ah, I see. Do you like this property? Yeah, I think it's a great place. My husband was happily chatting with the real estate agent. But could this really be the demeanor of someone whose crime was exposed just yesterday? He seemed in high spirits, not looking down or scared at all. But I couldn't believe the real estate agent was lying. For now, we decided to go back home. And then I immediately contacted the agent. Hello? I'm waiting at the cafe near the station. See you there. That evening, I told my husband I was going shopping and met up with the agent. Maybe the agent was lying but my husband's recent behavior had been really odd, and it wouldn't be surprising if the agent's story was true. Did you bring the evidence? I haven't shown it to the police, but if you want to take it to them, go ahead. 
We just don't want an arrest happening on our property. Then the agent showed me several photos as evidence. My husband had really been involved in a crime. I didn't understand why. Was it for money, or was he involved himself? But I couldn't stay with the criminal, and I would never forgive him. I took the evidence and went straight to my husband. Oh, you're back. It's late. I'm hungry. How hungry? Well, enjoy your last meal in the free world. Wait, why are the police here? I was scared of what he might do if I told him I wanted a divorce and was going to the police. He had become more aggressive lately, and I felt genuine fear. So I submitted photographic evidence to the police and went home with them. Seeing the police, my husband was shocked and trembling. But he couldn't run anymore. I can't believe you were committing crimes. That's despicable. And to think you were going to make my dad pay the down payment for that fancy house. You're finished as a person. What's going on? Explain this to me. What do you need explained? You see the truth right in front of you. You were selling that weird stuff, weren't you? He was silent, but seeing the police and hearing my testimony, he must have realized there was no escape. As he became almost hyperventilating, his eyes wide open, he charged at us. I was frozen, but the police who were standing by quickly subdued him. Hey, let me go. Hey, you. You're under arrest for the current offense. Even if I wasn't physically hurt, the crime was established the moment he tried to harm me. Plus, he had grabbed a rod-like object from a shelf and was swinging it around. There was no excuse for not having violent intentions. To think I was living with someone like you, it's truly the worst. Just disappear from my sight right now. You're going to pay for this. I'll make sure you regret it. Was that a threat to me? He was oblivious that if he continued with this abusive language, he'd only be adding to his crimes. Ignorance is indeed frightening. But then again, someone who knowingly commits a crime probably doesn't think straight. After that, my husband was taken away by the police, and I just collapsed in relief. I was really scared when he glared and charged at me. I didn't know what would happen. I'm so glad I had the police with me. I immediately called my parents, and they came over to the house. Are you okay? I am fine, but I was so shocked. I never imagined he would. It's good that you're unharmed. My parents were genuinely concerned for me, and I realized how lucky I was to have come out of this dangerous situation unscathed. But I had no idea. I never thought he would do something so terrible. He won't be in prison forever. Let's talk with his parents first. There's the divorce and future arrangements. We need to have a discussion. True, under American law, getting caught with drugs doesn't mean decades in prison. He might hold a grudge against me. If that's the case, I'd be too scared to live. I wasn't sure how his parents would react, but I had my parents with me, so I felt safe. We decided to have a talk. So, that's the situation. I'm so, so sorry. Our foolish son, how can we ever apologize? Please accept our apologies. No amount of sorry can erase the crime, but please take this as our apology. I braced myself for their resentment, but his parents apologized to me. Of course, it wasn't their fault, and they didn't need to apologize this much. I hadn't been physically harmed after all, but seeing his parents so earnestly apologizing, I couldn't help but wonder how such decent people ended up with a son like that. Please lift your heads. You don't need to apologize. We're here to discuss what's next. We'll ensure he never comes near you again, even after he's out of prison. I promise you that. And it's not much, but could you accept this? They said, almost crying, pulling an envelope from their bag. It was thick, likely containing about $100,000. Wait a minute, what's this about? I can't accept such a large amount of money. We know it's not much, but consider it compensation. What he did brought you a lot of trouble. Please accept it as a token of our feelings. But I didn't want to dismiss their gesture. But it felt wrong for his parents to take all the responsibility. He's going to prison to pay for his crimes. The trouble he caused me is a separate matter. As I thought about this, Thank you for your kindness. However, as adults in society, we should take responsibility for our actions. 
If this money is to be my daughter's, please promise that you will let him pay back the entire amount to you after his release. Of course, we won't be lenient with him and will make sure he's properly rehabilitated. I appreciate hearing that. We're truly, truly sorry. His parents, my former in-laws, apologized right until the end. It's so unfortunate that such good parents ended up with a son like that. However, they assured me they would handle the situation, so I decided to leave everything to them. I later heard he was sentenced to about four years in prison, as the drugs he dealt were considered less severe. I was cautious after hearing about his release, but fortunately, nothing happened. It seems we're now leading separate lives. Then, unexpectedly, I got a call from his parents. You don't need to apologize anymore, but we think it's important to make amends. If you really don't want to meet, we'll understand all right. I had almost forgotten about him in those four years and had started a new life. But his parents wanted him to personally apologize to me. I agreed, thinking it was a way of setting things right. I didn't want him to know my current address, so we met at his parents' house. It's been a long time. I'm truly, truly sorry. He had lost weight and aged about 10 years in those four years. Life in prison must have been hard, but he brought it upon himself. Seeing him kneeling without hesitation, I could tell he had changed or at least reflected on his actions. But that doesn't change anything for me. I have my own life, and there's no way I'd reach out to him again. Now, you need to pay back your parents and a ton for what you've done. When I said this, he just nodded, looking downcast. I haven't been in touch with him since, and I don't know what he's doing now. But I still talk to his parents regularly. They told me he's now working at a construction company and is being very diligent. His salary is managed by his parents. Whether he's truly repentant or not, I'll have to wait and see. But for now, he seems focused on working to repay his debt without wasting money on himself. He might fall back into his old ways, but if he does, his parents will probably cut ties with him. It's up to him now. I'll just let him be. All right, everyone's ready. Let's go. Yeah, by the way, I've since remarried and now live happily with my husband. My parents like him too. We often travel as a family, and I'm building a happy home with my second husband. Of course, there might be big problems ahead, but as long as my husband doesn't betray me, I'll support him no matter what. Once you betray someone's trust, it's hard to regain it. Relationships seem simple, but they're more complicated than you think. My ex-husband must have learned this the hard way. I just hope to live a life I can be proud of, always considering those around me and not end up like him.